Elon Musk says that a judge in Brazil has ordered him to engage in mass censorship on X. Brazilian Supreme Court Justice Alexandra de Moraes instructed X to crack down on users accused of spreading misinformation and hate speech. Now, Musk says that he was given a list of accounts he is supposed to block. In his decision, Moraes said, quote, X shall refrain from disobeying any court order already issued, including performing any profile reactivation that has been blocked by this Supreme Court, unquote. Elon Musk on Sunday said that X would defy the court's orders and lift all restrictions. Musk wrote on X, quote, we will probably lose all revenue in Brazil and have to shut down our office there, but principles matter more than profit. He further added, this judge has brazenly and repeatedly betrayed the Constitution and the people of Brazil. He should resign or be impeached. Now, the Justice Marais announced a criminal investigation into Elon Musk for allegedly spreading disinformation and obstructing justice. Brazil's Solicitor General Jorge Messias said, we cannot live in a society in which billionaire domiciled, billionaires domiciled abroad have control of social networks and put themselves in a position to violate the rule of law, failing to comply with court orders and threatening our authorities. Many ex-users expressed their dissatisfaction with the Brazilian government. Journalist and author Michael Schellenberger is in Brazil and has been tweeting over the weekend, quote, at this moment, Brazil is not yet a dictatorship. It still has elections and the Brazilian people have other means at their disposal to confront authoritarianism. But the federal Supreme Court and the Superior Electoral Court are directly interfering in those elections through censorship, unquote. Let's take a listen. It is not an exaggeration to say that Brazil is on the brink of dictatorship at the hands of a totalitarian Supreme Court justice named Alexandre de Moraes. President Lula da Silva is also participating in this push towards totalitarianism. Since taking office, Lula has massively increased government funding of the mainstream corporate news media, most of which are encouraging increased censorship. What Lula and Jim Morais are doing is an outrageous violation of Brazil's constitution, as well as the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. And we're working to get Schellenberger back on our own show so he can explain to us what's going on in more detail. Um, but this looks uh, very concerning. So, you know, Brazil's approach to kind of misinformation online has been to, you know, not obstructed by the First Amendment, as we have here in the U.S., um, has been to, uh, to crack down and to order social media companies to take down posts. This is the Supreme Court doing this, not the, actually the legislature. It's the Supreme Court has a lot of authority to take this actions to, you know, their argument is this is making the elections fair. We're taking down inaccurate information. Um, but so they have ordered, according to Musk, um, a, a several a bunch of accounts that have to be taken down. And Musk says he's had enough of that. And he, I think Musk also said that he's not, he was not able to be informed of like what, was, what is the actual content that makes these accounts, what is what supposedly like this is the piece of content that violated the policy. It's just a list of accounts he has to take down or, or, have, or keep, keep having taken down. My understanding was that the accounts were related to the kind of Brazilian 1-6 that had happened right. where there was a storming of the Capitol. Is that correct? Yes, that is the understanding, um, and it's it's um, it's it's interesting that he's you know taking this step, saying he's gonna he is actually gonna shut down X in the company uh, in the country if it comes to that. Um, you know, obviously this is a dance that the social media companies, including X, have had to make with foreign governments when they again not having a First Amendment. This happened in Turkey. This is something they deal with in China all the time. You know, what level of uh, at what point does it become you know, we can't we just can't we can't censor on this level you know it's a like a delicate balance and you know we've talked about it a lot to the extent that they they cave and they say fine we're going to take down stuff but this is Elon saying enough is enough no yeah, more. I'm glad you brought up some of the other instances of this because this does seem like a very different posture than the posture that Elon Musk took when talking about Modi making these direct requests to censor um, tweets, not just domestically, which is usually the case, but going even further to um, censor certain tweets globally so no one in the world could even look at them. And when pushed about that, and we've talked about this in the context of the Twitter files and whether or not it's right to characterize um, uh, Elon Musk as a kind of consistent 
and principal defender of free speech. When Elon Musk has been asked about his choice to bend the knee to Modi, when people who've worked with the Twitter files have been asked about this, it does seem like there's an understanding that you can't win every argument, that he's doing his best, that if he wants to operate in a certain country, then he has to bend the knee. And I do wonder what you attribute or what one could attribute the different posture here in Brazil than the one he took, let's say, in India. I mean, maybe it's just so vast. I mean, he did, you know, to be clear, in India, he did um, fight it in court and then lost and then caved to that. I just, I don't think, and I would say the same thing here. If he ended up, you know, doing what uh, the Brazilian Supreme Court wanted, I would not say that really impacts his commitment to free speech. Again, if, if a if a government, authoritarian government, or a, or a government that is frankly in other ways not even authoritarian, but on speech happens to have different policies and to start ordering you or a, you as a, the head of a company to take down content, I mean, your response to that, I don't think, says anything about your commitment to free speech. Well, here's it says a, it's the policy of the government. Let me read what Musk said about why it was that he was going to capitulate to the Indian censorship. He said, quote, we can't go beyond the laws of a country. Twitter cannot offer the same protections of speech to Indian users that it used in the U.S. and other Western countries, he went on to say. So if, it's, if the constraints that he sees or if he sees his role as not going beyond the speech constraints in a given country. And as you say, if Brazil doesn't have a First Amendment the way that we have expectations of having our speech protected in the United States of America, then why is it now that he's choosing not to go along with what Brazilian law would allow, regardless of whether or not we in our, within our American disabilities I mean, would agree with it, and simply you know, follow the court order here. I mean, he is arguing that this does, in fact, violate Brazilian law. I have no idea whether that's the case. I have no familiarity whatsoever with uh, Brazilian laws relating to elections and speech. But um, he's saying he's going to oppose it in court. And again, he did fight it in India. He just lost in court. So I think it'll be interesting to see. Look, I mean, obviously, we can't get around the fact that, you know, this is... Um, this is a... Brazil has a left-wing government or a, you know, a, not a... It, no, it's a left-wing government, I would say, or a progressive government. Uh, the, the ruling party right now is is the one that replaced Bolsonaro's um, right-wing government. Um, Elon Musk is a conservative figure, um, so he might take special opposition to speech of conservative or Bolsonaro-affiliated people being um, silenced. So if you want to impugn his motives in that way, that's totally fine. But you know, I, I mean, especially given, I mean, I do think that the politics of this are relevant, what you're describing, the underlying speech censored here. Again, this is not me saying whether I think it should or should not. I don't think that Donald Trump should have been taken off of Twitter in the United States of America because of 1-6. So certainly, I'm not making an argument that because well, conservatives... certainly shouldn't be taken off Twitter because the government ordered it, right. which is and the so, case going on here. And so I'm certainly not saying that I'm making an, uh, a substantive argument that these people in Brazil should be censored for doing basically their own version of a 1-6. But I do think there's something, you know, inconsistent that's pretty shockingly inconsistent about Elon Musk's behavior. And I do think it's worth reading, you know, examining how much the underlying politics of the situation are driving his commitment to speech. This is something that we've seen at length with Elon Musk, allowing people who he has personal relationships with back on the app while keeping people off the app who he feels like have slighted him personally, kicking Barry Weiss out of the Twitter files over her defense principal defense of the Elon Jets account, which he had censored off of Twitter, and on and on and on. So my only my only concern here, while we're looking at the reporting on this story, is that if Elon Musk is doing the right thing, let's say from a speech perspective in this instance, is it fair to characterize him as, you know, standing in the way of totalitarianism as he's being characterized well, by, by Schellenberger and not a narrower claim? In Brazil, he's behaving in a way that is consistent with his free speech values, what gives, and why can't we expect the same kind of consistency um, in other I mean, countries in the world? Sure, and I have... Including the United States of America, where he has not been consistent on uh, uh, upholding our own First Amendment values here at home. Look, I agree with that, and I have no problem continuing to probe um, the extent to which he is committed to um, free speech. Um, but that said, I, I don't want to lose sight of the big story here, which seems to me to be, I mean, a, a gov the Brazilian government um, ordering widespread censorship of dissenting or allegedly misinformation or hateful posts um, relating to the political opposition um, is, is terrifying to me and very authoritarian and something that is largely prevented here in the U.S. by the First Amendment for good reason. But, you know, we have all of these bureaucrats 
in the U.S., you know, in the, in the FBI, in the CDC, and DHS, and even the White House, who try to exert influence over social media, you know, the Twitter files, the Facebook files, all of that, um, uh, the misinformation researchers, people who I, I think, frankly, wish they had this level of ability to just snap their fingers and force a social media company to comply as they can in Brazil. This well, is this is a dystopia to be warned against and prevented. One other part of this reporting that it's important to um, convey is that Elon Musk is facing daily fines for not complying with these court or orders of an amount just shy of about the equivalent of $20,000 a day. Now that is sort of small potatoes for someone who's the richest man in the world. But it, on the other hand of it, Twitter also has been experiencing all of these financing problems after uh, following Elon Musk's purchase of the app and the flight of a number of advertisers. So it'll be interesting to see if that has any coercive effect. But Elon Musk seems to be saying at this point, no, it does not. And in fact, he plans to continue to violate the orders by disclosing sometime shortly, according to some of his tweets, all of the correspondence that's been going on um, that reveals the censorship, the, the extent of the censorship, and what the censorship demands actually were. So we'll definitely be staying tuned to cover that. Do stick around. We're rising for you. Coming up next.